Hey guys, and welcome to the video. Another segment of Hacking Modding Monday News and Info. Today is Monday, the 25th of May 2020. And as it has been the case for the past several weeks, so much is going on on the scenes that I'm going to have to break this up into two pieces. Part one today, where we're going to cover the just the PS Vita as far as Sony consoles are concerned, and then some emulation stuff, uh, some miscellaneous mentions, quite a few, and then the top 10 most pirated movies of the week. And tomorrow we'll take care of the Nintendo systems. For those of you who are new to these segments, you can find out more down in the description in a brief summary. But very quickly, I just present to you you, what I think you guys would find helpful, useful, informative, or maybe just entertaining regarding the hacking, modding, homebrew, and pirate scenes. And this is, of course, all done with mainly the end user in mind. Let's go ahead and get started because there's a lot to cover. All right, and the only Sony system that we will be covering this week is the PS Vita. And the only thing we have here is this, which is an update to 11 MPV-A. Now, this is actually a music player for your modded system. This will play, you know, your favorite tracks, even in the background while you're playing the game. It does support most of the games. There are a couple of limitations here. You can see the various formats that are supported, the various features, the controls, and all that good stuff. This is a very simple, straightforward, easy to use music player, and it installs even easier as it's just a regular VPK. All right, so now we head on over to the world of emulation where there's a lot going on. And our first stop brings us here to the official first release of the Citra emulator for Android. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Citra emulator allows you to play 3DS games on various platforms. It's most notable, of course, on the PC, but this is the first one for the Android. Now, we covered something, I think, last week or the week before regarding an emulator for Android that also did something similar, but this one, I prefer it over the other one. This one is more known. It gets a lot more updates. It has a bigger community on the PC. It runs quite well, actually. Anyway, this is the first release for Android. So of course, expect it to have bugs and it be, you know, pretty rough. There are some minimum requirements that you need to check out because they are pretty high. For example, you need a minimum of 64 bit Android 8. You need to have OpenGL ES 3.2 support, and they do recommend in terms of CPU that you should have a Snapdragon 835 or better, and that your results will vary greatly depending on your device's GPU drivers. Now, what I'm seeing here, though, is something more into the future. It's nice that they're releasing this now, but I know they do keep up with it. So hopefully in a few years when these devices get even more more powerful and they've had time to work on it even more, we'll have a nice viable solution to play 3DS games on our Android devices. Oh, and now that we are talking about the Citra emulator, they also posted this up showing a proof of concept of it actually running on the Switch. They are working on it, but of course it is still very buggy. There is no public release yet, but it's really interesting to see how far they've come along and they've made pretty decent progress. They have this video down here um, showing it in action and you can see how it displays on the Switch at at least for now, it shows like the top window and the bottom windows of the 3DS. And when you see it running here, it actually looks pretty smooth and good. So let's hope that they keep making improvements and we'll get to see this sooner than later on the Switch. And next we have Not64, which is actually an N64 emulator for your modded Wii and GameCube systems. This is something that I've covered in the past. If you are new to it though, make sure that you absolutely come here, read all the information that they provide because there's quite a bit from installation to controls, to settings, to the compatibility list, and all that good stuff. When you come here to the releases, this is where you can snag the latest release from and see the couple of changes that they made here. But one of the most notable things is that the developer noted that this may be the last release for a while. 
If you look back at when this was initially released, this has been around since like September 2017, but there was a point where from October 2017 all the way to April 2019, there was no update. That's like a year and a half. So let's hope that this time it isn't quite as long. And now we head on over to our miscellaneous mentions where there's quite a few things that we need to cover, starting with this, another update to the Universal Media Server. We've already talked about this a lot in the past. This is just a server that's capable of serving your videos, audio, image files to any DLNA capable device. And there's a ton of them that are compatible with this. This latest version is 9.5.0. When you click on that latest version link, you're brought here so you can see the changes. And then here on the main page is where you grab the latest download for whatever platform you are on. All right, and next we have something interesting, a story here regarding a lawsuit and Nintendo, except this time Nintendo is on the other side of the court, so to speak. They are the defendants. A class action lawsuit was filed against them last year because of the Joy-Con drift issue. So a man named Zachary Vergara brought the case before small claims court it later went to a federal court where Nintendo defended themselves by claiming that any consumer that purchases their hardware agrees to the end user license, which protects them from such lawsuits and instead requires all legal disputes to go through full arbitration. The judge presiding in the federal court agreed and dropped the case because in all fairness, the individual already knew this, but he tried to bypass arbitration by starting off going into small claims court. And they told him if he wanted to continue, he needed to go through an arbitrator to confirm that his case can go through a federal court. So it can still happen, but for now, Nintendo gets the win here. And why do I have a feeling that in the not too distant future, they're gonna get a couple more W's. Now we shift from Nintendo getting W's in court to taking the big L in other places. And in this case, the L stands for leaks because we have another one that's happened here a few weeks ago. There was that massive one that was all about uh, mainly their legacy consoles like the N64 and the GameCube and the Wii and uh, some development kits had leaked out, the source codes had leaked out and all of this stuff. We were still getting information about those leaks. Well, here we go again. This time, what has been leaked is the 3DS OS and Pokemon Diamond and Pearl source codes. So this is not as extensive as those first leaks a few weeks ago, but pretty much this leak um, tells you everything that you want to know about how the 3DS operates. There's also some interesting information there. It shows that NVIDIA was originally involved with the 3DS and uh, was in development since apparently 2006. Anyway, that's what some of the reports say. Also, there's nothing in terms of like any type of proto uh, prototype Pokemon games that have been found and what these leaks exactly will lead to, we're not sure. But one thing I am sure of, Nintendo needs to step up their security game. I'm just glad they don't run banks. Well, Nintendo doesn't have to worry about being alone in the leaks department. Microsoft will keep them company. They just experienced a source code leak. This having to do with the original Xbox and Windows NT 3.5. Although in all fairness, I don't think this is as big of a deal uh, to Microsoft as what's going on with Nintendo. Anyway, what leaked out here in terms of the original Xbox was some build environments, the Xbox development kit, emulators used for testing and internal documents. However, it seems that this kernel and source code have been passed around privately among enthusiasts already. So apparently hackers, developers have had their hands on this particular kernel and source code, and they've used it in the past to do homebrews and emulators. There's already a few Xbox emulators that are out there that have been struggling and aren't all that great. So they don't think that this leak will help further develop homebrews and emulators 
for the original Xbox anymore, but I'm pretty sure it won't hurt. Now, as far as Windows NT 3.5, that's pretty old. As a matter of fact, support ended for it way back in 2001. So needless to say, Microsoft doesn't seem to be too concerned about these leaks. And continuing with the original Xbox, we have the announcement of Insignia. This is a replacement for Xbox Live. So Insignia is a replacement server for Xbox's online services and is currently in private development, so it's something that is being worked on. Now it says here the service will not require any modification uh, modifications or patches to the software and will work with both stock and modded consoles as long as you have a way to dump keys. Anyway, this is something that is not going to be available until the fall of this year at best when they plan to hopefully have games working for it. If you're interested, it tells you here what you will need to do. And apparently quite a few people are interested because there's already well over 300 comments and pretty much all of them are positive and they're excited about it. And now we head on over to the iOS jailbreaking scene where a couple of interesting things have surfaced, starting with the latest update to Check Rain, which is 0.10.2 couple of bug fixes here that are notable, but the most important thing that stands out here is the iOS and iPad OS 13.5 support. Now I say that because here yesterday this surfaced and I didn't even know this existed. This is a jailbreaking tool called Uncovered. This latest version is 5.0.1 and this tool claims that it can jailbreak any device and all devices that are running iOS between 11.0 and 13.5. Now, prior to this, Check Rain could jailbreak pretty much everything, but only up to certain devices. I think with like the iPhone 8 and similar devices, but this says that anything running between 11.0 and 13.5 can be jailbroken. So I don't know if now this update to check rain means that it can do the same thing as well. Anyway, this kind of took me by surprise. It's something I definitely have to look into a little bit further and give you some more in-depth information. There are already tutorials that have surfaced regarding Uncover and Check Rain's uh, latest updates. I'll put the links to both of these sites down in the description. All right, and we're gonna wrap things up with this segment as we normally do with the top 10 most pirated movies of the week according to torrentfreak.com. This is for the week ending May 24th, 2020. By the way, if you hear any weird sounds in the background, there's a huge storm that just came in and it's thundering and raining buckets. So I need to hurry before the power goes out. Coming in at number 10 is Sonic the Hedgehog. Survive the Night debuts at number nine. Extraction, which was at number two last week, is now at number eight. The Invisible Man makes its debut also on this list at number seven. By the way, I've seen that movie and I liked it a lot. Of course, I'm a big fan of anything Elizabeth Moss. Next is number six, which is Bad Boys for Life. Capone is at number five. Coming in at number four is Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, which was at number one for two weeks in a row. Inheritance makes its premiere on this list at number three. And another movie that debuts on this list at a solid number two is The Lovebirds. And then Scoob, the Scooby-Doo animated movie, is now the new number one. The highest three movies here with highest IMDb rating is Justice League Dark at 8.1, Bad Boys for Life 7.1, and Invisible Man also with a 7.1. And now as this video comes to an end, so does Memorial Day 2020. So I will wrap things up by paying respect to all my fellow brethren, both men and women, who served with distinction, valor, and honor, and who are no longer with us, especially to those who paid the ultimate price so that we can enjoy our freedoms and so many of the other things that many times we just take for granted. Your courage and sacrifice will live on and never be forgotten. Thank you.